well. I mean, I know he's a bit of a Cornish legend and a bit of a rugby hero, and of course, he was part of a winning World Cup team for the victory. Welcome to Cornish. <laughs> I'm going to take that. That was for me. That was all for No, me. I know. I know it was all for you. It's Absolutely. For no, it really was. And, well, very good too. Now, Phil, you know, Cornwall, farming, yeah. family, it's really a huge part of you, isn't it? Well, it was. You know, it's very much the foundation stone of me, really. You know, I, I grew up on a family farm just uh, up in Beale, just north of Butte, which my brother now still farms with his family. And I just came across rugby when I went to, to a comprehensive school. Didn't do the mini juniors thing. That was kind of unheard of. But I guess when you grow up in a farm, I guess the family have got you working from a very young age, yeah, well, well, they? Actually, well, I probably shouldn't say this, but I will. My, my father actually made it very difficult for me to play rugby because he couldn't understand why you wouldn't be working on a Saturday. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, and that was, yeah. you know, you were doing this and you need to work on a Saturday. And, of course, I fell in love with rugby and, and through my teens and then I wanted to play and that beauty. Then I went down to Red Ruth and... Uh, you know, I was on my journey. Then I got into the school system and mum taking me everywhere. And, and dad I, not liking it? No, well, no. I, you know, I had, to, I had to get a relief milkman to milk the cows on a Saturday. <laughs> and we had to go and play rugby. And that, in but, a way, that says something about small family farms, doesn't it? I think those that are not engaged or understand the farming community, it yeah. is a blimmin' tough life well, The in one some thing ways. that farmers are is resilient. And yes, there's, there's huge issues around farming with well-being and, uh, the, you know, mental health. With the pressures, talk uh, on listening to you know food prices and energy prices. Yeah, it hits every. There's no winners here. Well, apart from big corporates, but there's no winners in this. And but as a child, you as soon as you could do something, you did something. And if your job was to stand down back lane and a hole in the hedge when you're drenching sheep day, and that is what you did. You yeah. stood there. <laughs> <laughs> and even but even silly things. You look back now, and, and people and I, they say you can't compare being a pro sportsman with farming. I said, well, you can because every day you've got to get up and go. There's no, yeah. I don't feel like it tomorrow. Or oh, it's dark. It's wet. It's freezing. Yeah. The electric's gone out. It's boom. Every day, yeah. relentless repeat over and over and over. And, and what over. was it? What was the quality, do you think, that made you good at rugby? Um, probably being told that I can't do something because I'm a cantankerous, awkward, stubborn bugger. Yes, you do have that reputation. Um, <laughs> but I, I just fell in love. For me, it, the rugby was a sideshow. I fell in love with rugby. If for once, you know, I was the big kid at school. Without getting too deep about it, I was a big kid at school. Got picked to last for most things. You, Five-a-side football I was always a goalie because by, just by default I filled half of you it, covered. you know, so, uh, <laughs> but, I, but I took it anyway. And it was a simple thing, actually. It was, it was a teacher, the PE teacher at, at Butte School when I went there. It was Mr. Opie. I actually taught my father and I said, sorry, so I said, I don't know how to play rugby. And he just put his arm around me and he said, don't worry, I'll show you. And I got involved. It was really positive. It didn't break me down. I'm a little bit spirited. He nurtured me and just gave me confidence and suddenly... It's like, wow, camaraderie, the boys together, mm. singing, song, we are from Bude, this is us. Went down to Bude Rugby Club, same thing, welcome, come in, yeah, come on. Oh, we weren't any good, we were rubbish, but, <laughs> but, you know, we are from Bude and we are the best, you know. Yeah. And it was that club, it was the emblem, it was a badge, be yeah. part of my town and to represent. And that, for me, was hugely important. But then when you start thinking about Cornwall, what it stands for, you know, fishermen, miners, passion, Trelawney's army, those 15 pieces of gold in that badge. You know, we are from Cornwall. The so, yeah, I, I just, I, I fell in love with that. And yes, my career and what it did and going up to Gloucester, very similar, very, you know, working class city, Gloucester, passionate, you know, love you and hate you at the same time, mm. which I kind of loved about it. And then I went on into England with... Well, you, I mean, you know, you, you know, you played many, many, over 70 caps for England and you were there at a, at a, at a period... When England rugby was right at the top. Well, a golden, you know, a golden era. You know, I, I was very, very privileged to have been part of that. And, uh, you know, around some incredible people, but led by some incredible people too. And 2003, obviously a very special moment. Yeah, yeah. And I, ironically, we talk about 2003. It's how crazy my little life is. So, so mum was the person who took me everywhere. In a little Fiesta 1.1 Popular Plus, up and down. <laughs> how, you know. how did you get in it? I uh, know, oh, <laughs> everywhere. And uh, sadly, my, my mum uh, didn't come out to Australia for, for the final, but my dad actually rang me. And bear in mind, dad had only watched me five or six times my whole rugby career. 
<laughs> and, uh, which is not because he didn't want to. He's just happy at home, busy. TV, <laughs> busy, working. And uh, Dad came out to the final. And he, and he flew out. But at the time, you couldn't get tickets or, or, yeah. or you know, the flights and yeah. the planes were all booked up. And he came out. And, and my dad but he was there. there. And, of course, 2007, it didn't quite happen. But no. And you had the honour of leading, you know, yeah. captaining a country. At oh, listen, moment, which is an amazing thing. Oh, to captain your country is an incredible thing. And, and for me, actually, 2007, although we didn't win it, actually means more to me. Because we lost 36 nil against South Africa in the, in the pool stages and we were deemed the worst rugby team ever. I accidentally kicked somebody and got banned for a couple of games. Uh, which <laughs> accidentally? Uh, accidentally. <laughs> well, it was either be kicked or score a try, so I took the, <laughs> I took the, I took the right option. But uh, to come back and to fight, and I remember for me the special moment was, and this is my, for me what the love of sport, was in Marseille in the quarterfinal against Australia. They were down to beat us, and of course they were, and we stood up to be counted, and it was grit, determination, honour, passion, pride, and that's what done it. And then suddenly France in Paris, I don't need to be encouraged against France, because I grew up watching South West television, blocking the tunnel up, not taking our beef, bullying our fishermen. You know, I, I grew up watching, all right, you buggers, you're having it, you know. And uh, to, beat, to beat France in Paris. It's funny, I go back to, not, I played the 99 Rugby World Cup, and people say, what do you remember about that? So I'll tell you the one thing I remember. We played South Africa in the quarterfinal in Paris. We got knocked out by the only idea, five drop goals. What do you remember about that game? I'll tell you what I remember. It was, or whatever for England fans in the, in the stadium, was buy British beef. I'll never forget that. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> well, on the theme of beef, on the theme of beef, you were known as a rugby player as Raging Bull, yeah. Yeah. which I think Jake Lamont of the boxer had before. But, I mean, you know, Phil, there you are. You know, your rugby career's over. Great career, it's over. And suddenly... You're winning MasterChef. Yeah, well... <laughs> how, uh, how does this happen? Well, to be honest, Nigel, I didn't go on to win it. I've always watched a show. I'd always loved food. I grew up around food, farmhouse yeah. kitchen, nan cooking, baking, pies, pasties, quiches, flans, tarts, buns, saffron buns, splits. It was just all happening. So I loved food. We had our own gardens. Granddad was my uh, person. Who, he was a guy who looked after us, really. He's growing and I'm nurturing. I'm a herdsman, so I, I'm, I'm, I love tractors because I'm a farmer, but I'm a herdsman. I like that nurture. And food is part of it. Yes, being a pro sportsman, food becomes very transactional, becomes numbers, amounts. But when I'm cooking, it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. I'm cooking. And I, and I use it. It's a bit of therapy more than anything. And I finish, and they ask me to come on. And, you know, the old classic with the researchers, for the girls and boys in the room, the researchers come, they, they want to find out about you. And you realise after about a minute, they actually know more about you than you know yeah, about yourself. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> it was an amazing thing to do. And you've oh, done it, and you've I gone on from it, yeah. there, and you've got sports brands yeah. and restaurants. Yeah. And, I mean, just amazing. And but food, farming, and rugby, are, although very different, are actually very similar. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's communities coming in, coming together, celebrating. Yeah. What do we celebrate with? Dr drink, good drink and food. Yeah. Conversation. Yeah. yeah. That is rugby, really. Banter, fun. You know, yeah, that's what farming is. What was a, yeah. what was a kitchen? It was an office. It was I a place of celebration. I think it's brilliant. Well, you've bought so much. You've bought so much to everything you've done, Phil. And I reckon this crowd have really loved having you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.